Barbara Carter and I love to cook. Now I'm a retired school teacher so now I have a lot of time on my hands. I cook all my favorite things. You can see my ingredients for today's today's cooking right here. Um, I have time to make some things that were my favorites as a child and which I cooked all my life for my children. They all love it so today I'm doing a little differently. Today I'm doing one of my favorites mac and cheese, only this is Mexi mac and cheese. It's gonna be a little different. I've uh, blended my cheese, a little bit of jack cheese with the sharp cheddar. Uh, of course, I'll use real good butter to make the sauce. I've got the flour and on top, we're gonna to use a few tortilla chips uh, and a little extra cheese. Little Ortega's diced green chilies and that's what really makes it Mexi mac. Okay, we're ready to put these things together now. I've started by getting eight cups of water boiling here, salt in it, about a tablespoon, um, eh, two, two teaspoons. And then I set the temperature on my oven to 350, so by the time we get this all together, it will be ready to get the dish. I'll start with my uh, six tablespoons of butter, which I'm going to put in here, and that's real good butter. This is gonna make a great sauce. So I will turn it up just to medium on the burner here because I don't want it to get uh, melting too fast that I start scorching my pan or something. But there it is. We're going to get melted butter, the start of the cheese sauce. And in, when it's good and melted, then I will add a little flour. Now I'm just giving the butter little slight turns that melts. I'm, I uh, don't want to turn my pan up too high. I like to take my time. This is good sweet butter. It's not salted, so I'll be adding a little extra salt to the sauce. Mmm, water's boiling. Okay, this water's got a good rolling boil, so I'm going to sprinkle the whole box of pasta. This is a whole pound. And then, of course, anytime you add your pasta, you got to give it a good stir. And then you watch it for a little while because you don't want it to boil over. So I probably will turn the burner down a little bit. We don't need that problem because who's going to have to clean it up? Me. My butter is completely melted. So little by little, I'm going to start adding a little bit of the flour, mixing it in gradually because we don't want lumpy sauce. And as I stir it in real gradually it's easy to keep smooth i've got about five tablespoons but i don't think i'm going to need all of it in this sauce because i'm using an awful lot of cheese and that will thicken up the sauce a lot more too but now it's coming to a good boil so i need to turn this down because I've got a little bit more flour to add to it and this has to be completely smooth before we put the milk into it that looks pretty good. Okay, I'm adding one more tablespoon here because I do want it to be thick enough that I can add the milk now without making it too runny. So this, this is a really good consistency now. It looks pretty good. So as soon as the pasta is ready, which will be in about five minutes, I'll drain it. And then by then the cheese will be in this sauce. What I'm making is basically a white sauce, a, a good basic uh, white sauce, when you learn to do this, you can use for a lot of recipes. I'm very gradually adding some of my milk to this now. Doing it very gradually because this has to keep blended nicely. And I will just put a little in at a time and make sure that it's nice and smooth. Nice and smooth. This first part of the milk is blended nice and smoothly, so it's time to start adding more because this is not the easiest way to pour it out of this bowl. But I'm using so much for this large recipe. Gradually put it in there. When I see that it's all blending well, I can kind of dump the rest of it in. And what I will do now is to turn the burner up just a little bit, but keep an eye on it, because this is when the thickening will start. Once that milk gets nice and warm, it will become a nice, creamy, thicker sauce. 
Okay, I had to lean over and give this pus another stir because actually it's getting to almost ready to dump out into a colander. Not quite, I'll test that in a minute. But when you are cooking a large amount of pasta, you gotta make sure it's not sticking to the bottom of the pan. All right, got a lot of pasta and it's all ready to get into the colander. Just dump it all in. Yep, there's the timer saying it's ready. Okay, so it doesn't get all stuck together. Adding a little bit of butter to it right now is a good idea. And once I get this all scraped out, I'll put a little butter in the bottom of this pan before I put the pasta back into it. Mm-hmm, a lot of, a lot of pasta. Gonna feed a lot of hungry boys. You can tell this is thick enough because when you draw your spoon through it, look at, look at that. It's bubbling, so that means I'm going to take it to the side, turn off the burner, because I don't want it to get stuck on the bottom because it's adding the cheese time. This looks luscious. Look at this. See, as you pull your spoon through that, you can just tell how thick it is. Not really thick. We don't want it really thick because this is a creamy sauce. By the time I put all that cheese in here, it'll be thick enough to put with the pasta. Okay, I've pushed this, I have an electric range here, so I had to push this off the burner a little bit because I don't want it to scorch on the bottom. And I'm now going to add all this lovely mixture of cheese. I have ch sharp cheddar and jack, and we're going to put most of it in at a time. It doesn't make too much difference. Let's just give it a stir. Mmm, looking good. Okay. I probably will add just a little bit more. Let's see how it looks when this is done. I've got another cup over there to add to it. Because I always have some uh, on the side. We have to sprinkle some on the top when it goes in the oven. Alright, you can see that with five cups of cheese in here, four of which are sharp cheddar, one jack, it's not quite as dark as if it was all cheddar, but I like the little sharpness there. And I held a little bit of the milk back because I didn't want it too runny, but I can see now that it's plenty thick. And I'm gonna add just a little bit more milk to it because after you get in the oven, it gets thicked up, but anyway. So now I'm blending the last of all that milk in there, six cups. Okay, here we go. All the cheese sauce, at least most of it, is going in on top of the pasta. Let's just stop right there, though, and give it a stir. Make sure that it's going in smoothly. And look at this. Oh, yeah. That's going to be really good. That nice pearly pasta coming up there. That pale sauce because it does have a lot of jack in it. Well, let's just get the rest of it in. Not going to use it for anything else. And here we go. Blend it all in nicely. Just have one more thing that we're going to add to it in a minute, but let it cool a little bit before we put it in on, into our baking dish, we're gonna add our little surprise ingredient, and that is the green chilies. Now I'm adding this special ingredient, these nice mild diced green chilies. I'm going to sprinkle those in. I'm gonna put, like, this is a large can, so maybe two thirds of it before I see if I need any more. Uh, I know who I'm serving this to, they will probably appreciate the whole can. So I am just telling you, if you buy a can, you can get the smaller Ortega chilies. You don't have to use a large can. I'm using the whole can because this is going to be so good. These are mild green chilies, so, you know, this is, everybody would love this. Mexi Mac. All right, I have going ready to dish all this lo lovely stuff into a pre-buttered casserole. I like to make sure that I'm able to clean my dish afterwards. And it's always best to make sure the 
casserole dish is prepared before you put it in the oven. Here we go. Look at that with all those green chilies. Okay. It's a real heavy pot because there's a lot of pasta in here, so I'm just going to turn and watch it dump down in there. It's all those little green chilies. You know, if you like to really spark it up, you can use a variation and blend it in with a few red chilies, too. It would be really spectacular. Only I don't want those hot chilies. These mild ones are all I need. Let's see how we're doing there. Now this is the crowning glory of my mac and cheese, and I think this is why my guys really like Mom's macaroni and cheese, because they love the crust that a lot of cheese on top gives the bake uh, as a final dish. So we're sprinkling this all over the top, except because this is Mexi Mac, I'm adding a few chips. I'm going to just stack a few over here at the side, but basically for a little crunch right here in the middle. And just a few around the sides for looks. Or actually to be dipping with. And that looks the way I want it to look. And as I said before, if you want more color to it, you add your red chilies also. But they are usually spicier. Okay, my oven is ready at 350 degrees, so my casserole certainly is ready to set in. And ooh, it's a big one, so it's heavy. Coming out, I definitely will be using fireproof mitts. Okay, it's in there for about 30 minutes, and I'm going to be watching it because if I know that everything is cooked, but when all that cheese on top is crusted and the cheese is melted and gets those little edges that are all crusty, then I know it's ready to serve. Okay. Okay, let's see. It's been 30 minutes at 350. Then I turned the oven up to 375 for another 10 because I wanted to make sure that the top got crusty enough. It's a pretty cheesy little dish here. I'm going to take it out of the oven. Okay, I better open this up and get it out because it is getting nice and brown on top, which is what we want. But we don't want it to get too brown. Oh, no, that's just a lovely color. Just picture this like a grilled cheese sandwich. Look at that. This is perfect, just the way I want it. I want that nice, crispy cheese around the edges and on top. And, of course, we've added the chips this time, so it's really going to be crunchy. But it's time to get up here and start cooling off because everybody's hungry, and we want to let it set for 5 or 10 minutes. Well, I really had a great time showing you the preparations for this, and I know we're going to enjoy it in about 10 minutes when it gets cool enough. And come back and visit again. Maybe I'll have another couple of my mom's 1940 recipes to share with you. Mm -hmm.